Hi, this is Derek Jordan. Welcome to the World Fusion Show, where we bring you the leading innovators in World Fusion music. Today, my guest is Todd Roach, percussionist and composer. Welcome, Todd Roach, to the show. Thanks, Derek. Thanks for having me. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Yeah. So far, so good. Thanks. Okay, good, 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 man. So, you grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah, in the area, St. Yep. Louis on the east side, yep. Illinois. Now, that's kind of a, well, somewhat conservative part of the country, you might say. Um, although I know <laughs> St. Louis is known for blues and jazz. And, yeah, and wasn't Count Basie from there? Yeah, and actually, uh, Miles Davis was born in my hometown. There you go, boom. Al Alton, Illinois. Nice. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. We that's have a cool. statue and everything. <laughs> of course you have a statue, <laughs> right? Nice. Um, so, you, um, how'd you get into music? What got you going in that direction? Yeah, I mean, I think all growing up I was into music, but always on in the margins. Uh, I played sports. I grew up in a sports family, lots of brothers, six brothers, two sisters. And uh, sort of in that time, at least, at least in my area, you kind of did one or the other. There weren't a lot of... Uh, theater, music, football players, yeah, I get that you. kind of thing, you know, just the social. And you played football, you played college football, right? I played college football. I grew up playing every sport. My mom put us in everything, maybe just to get us out of the house, but it was like, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, right. it was football in the fall and it was basketball in the winter and it was baseball in the spring and it was swim team, dive team and tennis team in the summer. Oh so we gosh. stayed active all the way. And I did that all the way up to high school and then in high school, football and basketball mostly, and, and really thought that that's where I was headed. Sure. Um, but I got uh, sort of uh, turned on to percussion, I guess, my first year in college. Mm. And um, Was there a teacher? Really, was there a, someone or just stuff you heard? I mean, it was, you know, lovely people, you know, playing, playing music, uh, hand drums and guitars. That was sure. the first stop. Yeah. And it was, um, I guess at that time, I was looking for something different than... Uh, lifting heavy objects and getting yelled at, you know? <laughs> and so uh, I guess, you know, for me, it felt like a calling. I felt super drawn to it. Mm. And I just kind of obsessed. And I started playing on my own. I started seeking out teachers. Mm -hmm. The one thing that sports gave me was this discipline of, of practice or study. Or uh, yes. if you take the same concepts of working out and training and you apply them to anything, in my case, hand drums and some pretty difficult technique, and you can just play and practice for hours and have that discipline of every day That's approaching right. it. I was able to make up ground, I think. Um, and so even though I didn't have a lot of training as a younger um, human, <laughs> uh, I was able to um, really sort of attack it in a way. I know that sounds like a weird word, but no, I, I was able to embrace it yeah, and embrace uh, it. pursue it uh, tenaciously. And right. so um, those were the sort of systems I set up for, for myself. And yeah. I was able to find traditional and American teachers in hand drums or percussion and music. Right. I was able to study um, folk music uh, from Egypt and Turkey and yeah. was able to study uh, the rhythmic system from South India, Carnatic mm -hmm. music. And yeah. really just by listening and playing and practicing and, and interacting, I was able to build uh, my skills and yeah. build uh, my access to different experiences. That's great. Why don't we go to the first video clip, which shows you doing a duet with Shane Shanahan um, and get a demonstration of Todd's technique and the type of uh, drumming he does.
Yeah, right. Cool, cool. Yeah. So what's that instrument you're playing there? So those are uh, ricks. Uh, they're from Egypt, but also found all over the, the Middle East. Mm. I think the um, my pursuit has been with a, a family of drums called frame drums. Mm. And by definition, it's a, a one-headed drum whose uh, diameter is greater than the depth of its shell. Yeah. And those drums come jingled and non-jingled. And right. so... Many countries all over the world have a tambourine tradition that's much different than what we're used to. The, just the shaking and keeping, you know, t uh, time or pulse. Uh, these tambourines um, have low, low tones, high tones, slaps, um, a bunch of techniques for expressive um, phrases. Sure. And uh, that's what really draws me to them. And also the the ability to tune them slightly different and create almost like drum melodies between right. the what you saw in that last clip. Sure, also I noticed, and maybe some people did, is how you actually work the jingles too um, with your fingers as a separate technique for that. Yeah, so you're... Um, that instrument's probably the most difficult instrument yeah. I learned how to, I've ever learned how to play, yeah. and um, it really... It's not only are you manipulating the jingles and, and isolating each of your fingers, but you're playing a closed style as well, which I think the clip mm -hmm. started with, mm -hmm. where you're right. you're muting with your top fingers to get the pop sounds and then releasing to get the open low tones. Right. So it's uh, technically hard um, and easy to make it sound sloppy. Um, <laughs> luckily, you know, you can put some time in and, and get some clean sure, sure. Uh, passes with it. You yeah, know? You're great. So. so you've recently been playing with Paul Winter Consort. And uh, uh, when, how did you get involved with him? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just a sub on, on the gig, so uh, I'm not sure where, where on that list, maybe, you know. <laughs> uh, but um, let's see, how was it? Maybe it was from Eugene Friesen, yeah. I think. Um, Eugene. Does Mogul, Glenn play with him too? Glenn's and nice. Glenn, who's one of my teachers for frame drums, plays with him. But um, I think probably it was Eugene who's still active with him. Yes. And uh, they did something local years ago, maybe f six or seven years ago. And it, and I did that, and then I've been, you know, maybe a couple a year, a few a year, depending upon where they are and what he's doing. So right, right. we played at the Latches as well right. in a big show, right. um, and I think that was probably the one that that uh, got me in the door. And then from there, it's just whenever it happens. Yeah. You know? For those who don't know, the Latches Theater is in Brattleboro, Vermont, where we are currently, and where we shoot this show. Um, I want to go to the next clip, okay. and this in this one you're playing a larger frame drum, and you're playing a duet with Marla Lee, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, very nice. Might be worth noting that so far in the first two clips, 
I'm only playing in seven. Yeah, okay. So That's it's good. seven beat time cycle, uh, which is not as common right. here, but uh, certainly through Middle Eastern drumming and and even Indian phrasing, uh, sevens is super common. And so yep. both those clips are original compositions mm -hmm. um, and, and not so traditional in the phrasing, but just mm. the idea of the math right. um, has stuck with me. And I, I tend to work with sevens and fourteens a nice. lot. Yep. Cool, cool. So I know teaching is really important to you and it's a big part of your life. Tell me a little bit about what that means to you. Yeah, I mean, I think sometimes we don't, we don't necessarily choose what we are in, in a lot of ways. Um, and so for me, teaching has been a vital part of my life, my existence. Um, I am one of the founders or founding members of the Kindle Farm School, mm. which is an alternative school for boys up in Newfane. And I have a studio here called The Loft, which we've been running since 1999, running right. percussion programs and producing world music concerts and really staying active, um, both with uh, music performance and education. And then I've done residencies all all over the place. Mm -hmm. I've, I've taught um, in local schools. It's, it's too many to count. Mm -hmm. um, universities, festivals. Um, and so teaching winds up being a big, big thing for me. And, and part of that is financial. You live in a small area. You have to diversify as a musician. It's hard to get really high paying, uh, consistent, uh, bigger gigs. So uh, financially diversifying and teaching, but it would be sort of playing it down to say that that's what it is for me. Um, I enjoy connecting. I enjoy sure. passing on. I enjoy creating experience for kids. Um, that they didn't know was possible, it, right. whether they're going to continue to be musicians or not. That's right. This idea of creating moments, you know, connected to each other and, and clearing out and connecting through music is mm. a huge part of who I am and, and what I aim to do. Great. I would like to ask you to demonstrate on the drum now um, some of the specialized technique um, that you do with the frame drum. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, what, what attracts me to... Um, this percussion is that um, it's very simple in its design. You get skin and hoop, um, or skin and clay, as you'll see. And there's some uh, language, drum language that you use that unifies them. And and then you can you do that orally. And so it, it also in my teaching, it's a great way to get off the page and have uh, students vocalizing and using their bodies. But you have a uh, three basic techniques or sounds. One is a low tone called doom or doom. One is a high tone called tak or tek. And then there's a holding hand technique called uh, ka. And really that language is all you need to get going, right? Dun, taka, taka, dun, taka, taka, ta. Dun, taka, taka, dun, taka, taka, ta. And so on and so forth. You, you, you say what you play and then you go from there. I think for me also, uh, these drums have all these alternate techniques, fingerings, sounds, shades, and they act as substitutions in and around that, that drum language. So, um, you know, for the frame drum, for instance, you can knock on the rim, you can brush, you can snap with all your fingers. Mm. And you can combine your hand into two beaters, essentially. And then you get uh, some more expressive qualities. So I'll just string a little bit together on the frame drum for you. Sure. Nice. So I wanted to talk to you uh, also about your new group, um, Dunham Shoe Factory, which you're doing a lot of work with right now. That's right. And I, we have a, a couple of clips I'd yeah, like to get, have time to go to. Yeah. So uh, what, what's going on with that group? Well, um, Dunham Shoe Factory is a quartet using oud, the Arabic fretless lute, uh, with my friend Mac Ritchie, who's out of uh, Boston. 
uh, local clarinetist Anna Patton, who's amazing if you haven't heard her, and a cellist named Dave Hoy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've come together and just brought our years of study in, in ethnic music and also Western music, and we're creating original acoustic compositions. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, we're excited. We're headed to Germany to, at a festival called Tambouri Mundi, which is an international uh, frame drum festival. Great. And they're bringing us over for a concert here in early August. That's so, fantastic. Yeah. Why don't we go to the clip right now and watch this? So I, I'd like to have time just to go to the next clip too. Sure. But, um, that's kind of a Middle Eastern vibe. Uh, yeah. Would you say? Yeah. 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 Um, but I know the next clip is Brazilian, uh, yeah. Baiao. Yeah. Um, so what other styles do you do besides Middle Eastern Brazilian? Well, I mean, it's just a it's a combination. It depends on what the composer is asking sure, for. Sure. In that case, the cellist Dave Hoy wrote the piece and. He lived in Brazil for years, and, right. and his wife is from Brazil, and spent some time around those structures, those rhythms. Sure, so sure. that's what I call for. So, right. I mean, the the idea for me is to try to expand. I spent many years on traditional percussion, and now I'm trying to add a little bit of a multi percussionist thing to my my set, so I can right. reach more people or play with more people. And in this one, you're doing a multi kit kind of a thing. Yeah, it's a little yeah. a little bit, not just the frame drum. Why don't we do watch this last video? It'd be great.
Um, definitely got some Brazilian in there a little flavor bit. Yeah, going, that's right. right? Yeah. So thank you, Todd, so much for coming and being part of the show today. Really want to. It was great to have you and for you to show all these techniques and you know to play. We're gonna go now to a live uh, in the studio playing, which we usually do to close the show. Remember, think globally, listen locally, and support independent music. Thank you. <laughs> 